day to day reflections are still available at the entrance of the church, but they're also available online on our website. And a reminder that this morning, <coughs> drive up distribution of blessed times is at 11 o'clock, starts at 11. And we'll come up the side driveway between the two churches uh, right near the food pantry door and uh, enter in that, into that driveway from the main parking lot. And the, uh, there'll be members of the Knights of Columbus out there to help get everybody in line and guide you along if you need any help. Thank you.
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord gave, God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a world that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I give my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks. something to be grasped 
Rather, he, em he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of, the, of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Jesus said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and two of the sons of Zebedee, and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time. Saying the time thing, same thing again, and he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking a rest? Behold, the hour is at hand, when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand onto his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its, into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how will the scriptures be fulfilled? which say that it must come to pass in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out against, uh, come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away, Archivist, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Though many false witnesses came forward, Finally, two came forward and stated, This man said, I can restore the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent, and the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us, under oath before the living God, whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from
now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? We have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophecy for us. Christ, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. The maids came over to him and said, You too were with the Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystander came over and said to Peter, Surely you two are one of them. Even in your speech it is your way. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, he will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and betrayed innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money, money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priest gathered up the money but said, It is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field even today is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said. You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. At that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas, or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. I have had nothing to do with this righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? Only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead. He took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. After he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him. Weaving a crown of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, 
wanted to, saying, Hail, King, King of the, the Jews. Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had marked him, they stripped him of, his, of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man then pressed him to service to carry his cross. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head a written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God, and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priest with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself, so he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Elahi, Elahi, Yama Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This, this one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in water, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, Wait we'll let us see if the fire comes, comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. I want you to kneel wherever you are. Raised from the 
character finds himself in the same position, with now his own father trying to save him. Seeking the same prize while holding on, it is that voice of the father calling his son's name that causes him to snap out of it, to reach back to his dad and to be saved. Are we too now hearing the father's call? The call shared through Jesus Christ to each one of us, a call that many saints, like St. Saint John Paul II, would be said would mean opening the doors wide to Christ, to seek him who has loved us first. Are we hearing it even in the midst of our trials and these difficulties? Or are we running from it, seeking some other prize of consolation that cannot satisfy the deepest longings of our hearts? We're in a trial now, my friends. But as always, God is reaching to us all, asking us to reach back to Him. Yes, God saves from Jesus, and we'll remember that lesson throughout the entire week. But if you and I do not reach back, allowing ourselves to be saved and to be faithful to our mission, we too can fall. This isn't the time for self-reliance. Now is the time to entrust ourselves truly to Jesus, perhaps even for the very first time. Our path will only be illuminated in his light. Even then, it will be tough enough to make a single step. But as we move, it will be the right one in his light. And if we make enough right steps and united our will to his, we will find ourselves basking in the beautiful glow of Easter morning. Let us stand now and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory, to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we begin our journey on Holy Week, we entrust all of our prayers before the Lord, asking for His grace and mercy. For church leaders, both lay and ordained, that they continue to spread the good news of the crucified and risen Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all those who lead the world's nations, particularly where there is unrest, that they commit themselves anew, especially at this time of world concern for surviving this pandemic and for justice and peace in their lands. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who dedicate their lives to the welfare of others, our first responders, doctors, nurses, and all involved in the care of those suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the sacrifice of our Lord and his passion deepen our understanding of the value and dignity of every human life. Let us pray to the 
Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our mission parish in Haiti, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the members of our local public safety, and of course our military, who keep us safe from harm, both home and abroad, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those friends and loved ones who've gone before us, into the embrace of our Lord's arms, especially for Raymond Becker, whom we will remember. In this liturgy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the intentions of our parish prayer chain, and for all those prayers that you hold deep within your own hearts, that are known to God alone, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, in the light of your only begotten Son, help us to trust and have a deeper faith to be led one step at a time by his great light of goodness. We place everything into your hands, O Lord, and entrust ourselves wholly to you. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. It is right and just. It is truly 
right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sins, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. mystery of faith. Reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassionate, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow the world, all that is good.
My friends, I now invite you to join me in a prayer of spiritual communion. We pray, my Jesus. My Jesus. I believe that you are present. I believe that you are present. In the most holy sacrament. In the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment. Since I cannot at this moment. Receive you sacramentally. Receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. I embrace you as if you are already there. And unite myself wholly to you. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through you the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. I now invite you to pray the St. Michael prayer. We pray, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, upon this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everyone. Our closing.